I randomized Pokemon Sword and cranked the difficulty up to 11 by turning the trainer AI all the way up and increasing the levels of their Pokemon. And today, I want to find out if I can Nuzlocke this thing. If you don't know what a Nuzlocke is, basically it's a fun way of making a Pokemon game more challenging with some rules like if a Pokemon faints, it's essentially dead and you can't use it anymore. You can only catch the very first Pokemon that you encounter in a given area. And there's some other rules that I use in this playthrough, which if you really care, you can see them on screen now. But enough talk, let's get into the highs and lows that make up the emotional roller coaster that was this run. We begin our journey through the Gala region in our hometown of Wedgehurst, where we meet our mom, hot, the champion Leon, hot, the young professor Sonia, hot, this guy, hot, the local Wulu, scorching, and our rival, hot. But not to worry, we're able to more than make up for our friend here with the spicy choices that we get for our starter Pokemon. First off, we have Archaeops, who normally is a bit lackluster because of its ability to feed us, but since abilities are random, is a very solid choice. Next, we have the Solar Lion itself, the legendary from Pokemon Sun, Solgaleo. An exceptionally strong, albeit safe choice. And finally, we have the sleeper pick. And while he may be old, what he lacks in youth he more than makes up for in raw animal magnetism. Which I know is the real reason all you people play Pokemon. Yup, you guessed it. Our final choice is the grandpappy of Pokemon worldwide, Drampa who we ultimately decide to choose. But I think that means that Hop ends up with Solgaleo? Ugh. Anyway, after some quick fan service from Archaeops and a cookout with the boys, we get to put our new Drampa to the test against Hop. We take out his Wulu, then, much to our surprise, he sends in a Pelipper. So, turns out his second Pokemon is entirely random. Definitely dodged a lion-shaped bullet there. So we clean it up, then move on through some more story stuff, and get a chance to catch our first encounter on Route 1. With only five Pokeballs to our name, we decide against trying for the harder to catch Hitmontop and instead opt to try our hand at catching a Darmanitan. Luckily, we manage to not one-shot it, then it kindly gets into the third Pokeball we throw at it. We nickname this girl Danny, then move on our way to Route 2, where Leon gives us a bunch more Pokeballs, so we're able to snag a Kaparaja, which we nickname Trunk. Then we head back to the Pokemon Center to heal and decide we should probably check the shop, where we find two insane items, the Life Orb and the Choice Scarf, which we instantly snag, as well as a couple useful TRs. Then we battle this kit... What? Wait, uh, okay. <laughs> We beat this swimmer slash youngster, then have another uneventful battle with Hop, and after beating him, we're able to board a train out of town that takes us into the wild area. In a randomizer, the wild area is insane, so we spend a ton of time taking in all the wacky sights, like this levitating Drapion, or how about the massive model they gave Stack Attacka, or even this field full of Diancie and Zamazenta, a truly unruly display. Oh, also this is a new area, so we have to get our encounter. For runs in Sword and Shield, I give myself one encounter in the wild area to start, then one more per gym badge, so we'll be back. Don't worry. For our first encounter, we decide to check out the raid dens to see if we can find something truly overpowered, which is exactly what we do find, a one-star max raid with a Latios in it. And thankfully, with the help of the Suicune, we manage to fell the big blue beast and catch it. We nickname it Larry, see that it has the ability Fluffy, which makes it take half damage from physical attacks, which is insane. Then we single-handedly cause massive inflation in the Pokemon economy by cashing in on these big nuggets for sale for free at one of the Watt traders. And finally, we head into Modest Oak City, where we sell the nuggets for a massive profit and watch the opening ceremonies for the old gym challenge, but before that we have a run-in with Team Yell in the hotel. Which, you know, it's usually nice and easy to deal with them. Oh, wow. Rip old guy. You didn't deserve what that Wobbuffet did to you. The worst part about this death is that it was so easily preventable since Danny has taunt, which completely negates Wobbuffet, but alas. Anyway, we beat the rest of them without too much issue, then move on out of town after the opening ceremonies. On the way out, we battle Hop again, and thankfully his team isn't too scary this time, so we don't have too much trouble. Then while scoping out our encounters on Route 3, we accidentally run into a random Pokemon in the grass, which turns out to be a Cosmum. It would be pretty cool to catch this thing, but what are the odds, right? Well, we definitely need to weaken it if we want to have any chance of catching it. Uh, Things are really not going my way, huh? Look, I thought it was tanky, okay? From here, we have a battle with a police officer where we almost lose our elephant to a Golurk. Then we get chased around by some Kingler and beat this kid who turns into a chef and has a Latias on his team. We manage to make it through this treacherous route by the skin of our teeth and head into the Galar Mine, where we do our best to avoid the wild Giratina that roam these parts. Then we get our next catch, a Dwebble which we nicknamed David. As we're exiting the mine, we have our first encounter with Bead, where Trunk takes out his Cub Fu, then he brings in his second Pokemon Pokemon Kirlia, who we promptly hit with a super effective heavy slam. Wait, what? Innards out? <laughs> no way. If you don't know, the ability Innards Out damages the opposing Pokemon when the Pokemon faints, and it's enough to kill our sweet trunk. 
Highly unfortunate, but what can you do, right? <laughs> So we exit the cave, then head to Route 4, where we catch an Archaeops, which we name Anna, then we walk into Turfield Town and head into our first gym challenge. We start doing our thing, herding the Wooloo, beating all the trainers, until this random trainer just whips out a Zekrom. Homie, it is not that serious. Please chill. We end up stalling this thing out with Recover from Larry and narrowly defeat it without losing any Pokemon. Thank goodness for Fluffy is all I have to say. Anyway, after clearing the gym challenge, we arrive at the first gym leader, Mila. This is the point in the game where we set it up so that every important trainer will have a full team of six Pokemon. So key battles are gonna get real intense from here on out. Good thing, up to this point, everything's been going our way, right? For our battle with Mila, we lead with Danny, who gets yawned by his Togetic, so we have to swap around a bit until we manage to get back to Danny and finish it off. Then he sends in his schooled form Wishy Washy, which has crazy high stats and is definitely an intense follow up. So we swap to Larry and Dragon Dance as it goes for a dive. We go for another Dragon Dance, then a boosted stored power, which barely tickles this thing. And you know what? Turns out this fish knows the dark type move beat up which hits us five times and straight up kills Larry. Worse yet, after that we're forced to sacrifice our sweet tiny David to a dive from this fish monstrosity. Eventually Danny is narrowly able to clean it up with some hammer arms, then Milo sends in his Cursula, so we swap to Anna, but on the turn we swap, it smacks us with a super effective ancient power one-shotting Anna. This is by far the worst fight I've ever had against Milo. Oh my god. Goodness, but there's still a chance. So we bring Danny back in, who one-shots the Cursal right back with a bite and takes out his adorable hat-wearing Pikachu as well. Next is Milo's Carvana, so we decide to Dynamax and hit it with a Max Knuckle, which takes it out and boosts our attack. Okay, we just need a bad final Pokemon and we're gonna make it out of this one alive. Thankfully, Milo delivers with a Gumi, which goes down without any issue despite Dynamaxing. And we're able to walk away with our team in shambles, but at least we made it out alive. We say good riddance to Turfield Town, then head down Route 5, where we start looking for our next encounter. There's some wild Reggie Drago on this route, but this probably is not the time to go for a risky catch like that, right? So we pass that up and start running around hoping to see something at least a little useful. Then we spot it. The beautiful pink visage of our salvation. The mommy milky Pokemon itself Miltank. Thankfully, we're able to distract ourselves from its juicy udders long enough to catch it and nickname it Mildred. Next, we fly back to the wild area where we have another possible encounter with our new gym badge. After searching through the fields for a bit, we find a Squirtle, which is a strong enough but still catchable encounter, so we catch it and nickname it Sam, then head back to Route 5, where Sam evolves into a War Turtle, and we save this doctor from Team Yell and their, uh, oh. Giratina. Oh wow, Giratina. Okay, we beat the Giratina. Nice. Bullet dodged. Just one more trainer. It's all good. Cal Rex Rider. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. But even the Lord of the Tundra isn't enough to bring us down and we're able to defeat them, get the bike, and head into another battle with Hop at the end of the route. Nothing too crazy in this fight, Danny takes out his lead Charizard and Brion follow up, then gets big damage on his copycat Miltank. From here, Sam's able to come in and finish the Miltank off and take out his Purloin. Finally, Mildred comes in and roll outs her way to victory against Hop's Skarmory and Pest Simeon. With Hop defeated, we watch this Snom slowly drift by in the wind as we contemplate our existence, then head into Hallbury. And before we rush into another six Pokemon gym leader fight, we decide to investigate the town to see if there's any possible way we could get another team member to maybe even up the odds a little bit. Turns out there are these little fishing spots right down in the docks where you can in fact fish up your very own Sol Galeo. This is a pretty risky encounter, especially given the fact that the only balls we found in the random shops up to this point are Premier Balls, which if you don't know have the same catching strength as a regular old Pokeball. Not strong, but it's what we got. This lion almost kills Danny, but eventually we manage to snag this legendary beast. We nickname it Sam, forgetting we already have a Sam on the team. Maybe this will build a little rivalry or something, who knows. Anyway, with our four Pokemon squad, we feel at least a little bit ready to take on the next gym leader, Nessa. So we swim our way through a gym challenge, then head right into the battle. Unsurprisingly, Solgaleo is able to zen headbutt its way through her Muna, Araquanid, Gyarados, Snom, oh, Torchic, and Bronzong? Wow, yeah, that's a clean sweep. This guy was a good pickup for the team, huh? In defeat, Nessa hands over the second badge, we have lunch with Chairman Rose, then delve into the second part of the Galar Mine, where we're able to find and catch an Armaldo, which we nicknamed Pinchy. Before we're able to delve deeper into this cave, we have another battle with Bead, where Danny smacks his Ferrothorn around with a fire punch, then takes out his Lyran, Heatran, Clauncher, and Hatna with some hammer arms and more fire punches. And finally, he sends in his last Pokemon, Nagana, Naganadel? 
Nag Naganadel. I, I literally don't know how to say that. Anyway, we swap to Solgaleo, who, since it's part steel, is immune to poison attacks, and we take it out with a Zen headbutt. After beating Bead, we work our way through the rest of the cave, teaming up with Hop to take out a couple Team Yell Grunts, then walk back into the sweet embrace of daylight on the other side of the cave. Before we know it, we're charged by this Zerora. Guess this thing is our encounter now. Hope we can catch it. I don't know. Ah, perfectly timed high roll on the Iron Head. Rip. Well, we probably wouldn't have caught it anyway, or at least that's what I'm telling myself. Anywho, at this point, we arrive back in Modest Oak City, and we head straight to the Budu Drop Inn to get some rest. But before we can head off to sleep, we're forced into a battle with Marnie. We take out our first five Pokemon without any issue, but then she sends in her ace, Volcanion. War Turtle's able to leave it super low with some Aqua Tails, but takes heavy damage in the process. Then, thinking Marnie would surely heal her weak Pokemon, we go for another Aqua Tail to get some damage before swapping. Yeah, about that heal thing. She doesn't do that. Instead, Volcanion kills Sam with a water pulse. Ugh. At least with the free swap from Sam's death, we can bring in Solgaleo, who avenges his comrade, but it just doesn't fill that turtle-sized hole in our heart. <sighs> After some rest and deep thought, we remember that we do have another encounter in the wild area since we just beat the second gym. So before heading in to take on Kabu's gym challenge, we do some exploring, then come across a Poplio, which is kind of like ugly Squirtle in a way, right? Anyway, we catch it and nickname it Papa, then use some experience candies to evolve it into the war crime that is Brion. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, it, let me just, I'm just trying to get, okay, thanks, bye. Before heading back into town, we check the Watt Traders and find two very interesting items. Ability Capsules and Ability Patches. Since they're free, might as well get, I don't know, say 999? Thanks! The ability items allow you to swap your Pokemon's abilities, and since abilities are randomized in this game, there could be some seriously juicy stuff we could get. Take for example our Solgaleo here. One of its abilities turns out to be huge power, which doubles its attack stat, and I don't think I need to explain much more about why that might be broken. We also get Libero on Miltank, which switches its type to be the same as any attacks it uses, also insane, and less exciting but still quite good. We get Magic Guard on Pinchy and Multiscale on Darmanathan. Now with our new Newly juiced up squad, we head into Kabu's gym, where we catch some Trubbish to complete his challenge, then head in to face the Fire Lord himself. Danny crushes his Glossifer, Octillery, Solosis, and Hatterene. Then Kabu sends in his Wobbuffet wannabe, Pukumuku. But this time, we're prepared. We send in Papa, who happens to have literally just learned the move Encore by leveling up in the middle of this battle. So we Encore this Urchin so it can't surprise us with a counter, then take it out safely with Sam, who is also able to take down Kabu's last Pokemon, Mime Jr. Now that we've completed the first three gyms, we're free to head through the gate at the very back of the wild area into Hammerlock City. On our way there, we pass by the the herds of wild Dialga that roam the Hammerlock Hills, then find an Ivysaur, which we catch and nickname Rose after the Honorable Chairman himself. From here, we level up Rose until it evolves into a Venusaur, and we head into Hammerlock, then out onto Route 6. This route is pretty uneventful, except for the very first trainer and their Registeel Solgaleo tag team, but even two legendaries isn't enough to stop us. As we're looking at the Pokemon on this route, we decide to pass up on a Tapu Finny and go for a random encounter out of the fishing hole down here, which nets us a Baneri. Not great, but a fine backup in case something goes horribly wrong, I guess. Anyway, at this point, Papa's leveled up enough to evolve into a Primarina. Then we head into Stow on side, where we have our fifth battle against Hop. His lead Suicune goes for some pretty threatening calm minds, but we defuse that situation, and other than that, this guy isn't really able to put up too much of a fight, so we secure the W. This battle does mark the point in the game where most trainers will have Pokemon above level 36. While that might not seem like an important number, it kinda is, because we set this randomizer up to force trainers Pokemon to be fully evolved over level 36. So from here on out, it's gonna get a little dangerous. Anyway, not much else to do in town here, so we head into the gym, traverse this pinball bumper car situation, then challenge the gym leader Bia. Her lead Arctivish can't stand to the might of our fully evolved Primarina, but it gets big damage on us, so we swap to Danny as she brings in her Magearna. A couple fire punches is more than enough to deal with this clockwork machine, then she brings in her Sea King, so we swap to Rose to deal with it with a few petal blizzards. Next up, is her Spiritomb, who puts a curse on Papa, so we swap around a bit until it eventually kills itself with its move Memento. Thanks, bud. Then we bring in Danny, who Dynamaxes and cleans up her Thievul, then gets a bit of damage on her last Pokemon, Dracozult. But a meaty max rockfall from the fossil Pokemon makes it too scary for us to stay in, so we bring in Sam, who finishes the fight with a couple Zen headbutts. In defeat, Bia graciously rewards us with our fifth badge. Then as we're leaving the gym, we hear Bead causing a big ol' ruckus above the city, so we head up to put a stop to whatever it is he thinks he's doing here. And after a pretty uneventful battle, the chairman arrives on the scene and kicks this snark lord out of the gym challenge 
challenge for good. Next, we head into the Glimwood Tangle, where we catch an adorable apple pie dragon, which we nickname Yum, then send to the box forever. After that, we arrive in Bao and Leah, where there is literally nothing else to do other than head into the gym and, of course, catch up with Ball Guy. I'm really gonna miss you in Scarlet and Violet, big guy. Memories. Huh. Anyway, this gym puts both our acting and battling skills to the test, but thanks to the nifty buffs that they dole out in the battles, we make quick work of the audition. With our lead role secured, we head into Face Opal, who leads with a pretty spooky Mars Shadow, but thanks to the speed boost from our Choice Scarf, Sam is able to outspeed it and one-shot it with a Zen Headbutt. Then Opal starts generously giving out buffs in her own fight, so it's a quick Sam sweep, ending with us one-shotting her Mew, then finishing off her Dynamax Garchomp. After giving us the badge, Opal asked us to accompany her back to Hammerlock City. And who are we to deny this beautiful creature her wish? So we arrive back in Hammerlock where Opal kidnaps Bede to take him back to some kind of pink dungeon situation? Uh, hopefully he's okay. Then we head out east of the city to Route 7, where of course we battle Hop again, who gets pretty unlucky with his team this time, culminating with his cute little ace Chinchino. So as is tradition, we of course smack him around. Then after beating him, we grab our encounter for the route of Vullaby, which we nickname Van and pop into the party over Pinchy. Next up is Route 8, where we find and catch a Bouffalant, which is really just worse Miltank if you think about it, so we send our new friend Brad off to the box. Then we try our best to sneak past the wild Melmetal patrolling the grass. Oops. Sorry, sir. And we finally arrive at Sir Chester, home of the next gym. We heal up, then head in to put our patience to the test against this god-awful gym challenge. I hate this place. Thankfully, it's not too long before we make it through and get to challenge Gordy. Mildred takes out his lead in Teleon and his second Pokemon, Flygon. Then we swap to Danny to take out his Aurorus with a four times effective hammer arm. Next, he sends in his Talonflame, which falls to some body slams. And from here, he sends in his Sylveon. So we bring in Rose and Dynamax to take this thing out with a couple Max Oozes, boosting our special attack in the process. Finally, we get some decent damage on his Barrascuda, but we have to swap to Papa to finish this fish and ultimately take home the fight. Now that we've secured yet another gym badge, you already know it's time for a showdown with Hop. This time his team is a little bit more impressive, especially his lead Yeveltal, who stalls with Roost and forces us to basically use our whole squad to take it down. But once we take the bacon out, Sam is able to come in and take out four more members on his own, including Hop's swords dancing Haxorus. Then finally we bring in Danny, who finishes up the fight. Another gym badge also means that there will be new random items in the shop. So we check it out and we snag a choice band, which is a crazy held item that boosts your attack by 50% but locks you into one move. Then from here we head down to Route 9, defeat Team Yell in a Solgaleo mirror match, navigate the waters patrolled by the impressively gigantic Celesteela, and catch a Dragonair, which we nicknamed David. Then we're relentlessly chased by a Rayquaza until we arrive at the entrance to Spike Month. Here we do battle against Marnie to get access to the lockdown city. Danny's able to deal with her Metagross and Rose deals with her Vaporeon. Then Mildred comes in and takes out her Driplim and Tyranitar. Finally, the cleanup crew himself, Sam, finishes the fight against her Steelix and Cloyster. With Marnie defeated, we gain access to the city and the gym challenge, where we fight through the hordes of Team Yell grunts, bye, then take on the gym leader Pierce. Danny swiftly dispatches his lead Jinx, then he brings in his Galarian Weezing. You know, up to this point, everything has been going pretty great, right? We had a rough start to the run, but we pulled it back. I think the game might have sensed that, and decided to punish us a little bit with an explosion from this Weezing that basically one-shots our Danny boy. Something about this fight and Darmanitan's on my team, man. OGs out there know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we send in Papa, who takes out the next couple members of Pierce's team. Then we finally swap to Rose to finish off his last Pokemon, Nidoking. Now with the seventh gym badge, we finally gain access to the final gym challenge against Raihan. So we use some experience candies to level Van up until it evolves into a Mandibuzz. Then as we're battling through the double battles leading up to Raihan, David levels up to 55 and evolves into a Dragonite. I honestly think this might be my very first time ever getting a Dragonite in Pokemon. Kind of cool, always wanted one when I was a kid. Anyway, no major issues getting through the chumps in Raihan's gym, so we're easily able to get to the battle against the Dragon Master, where we use David and Papa to take out his Crobat and Incineroar leads, as well as his Spectrier. Then he sends in a Jinx, so we nope David out of there to avoid any four times effective ice moves, and bring in Sam, who's able to smack around his Dynamax Aerodactyl and take home the fight. From here, we meet up with all the friends we made along the way, then board the train to Winden, which drops us off 15 minutes outside of the city for some reason, and we subsequently lose our Rotom encounter to hail damage. Ugh. 
At least at this point, the trainers on this route don't pose too much of a threat to us, so we battle through. Then we wave at the majestic flying Inteleon that patrol the skies here as we arrive at Winden, where we waste no time and head right in to take on the first part of the final challenge of this game, the Pokemon Champion Tournament Gym Leader Extravaganza. Our first opponent in this challenge is Marnie. We make quick work of her first four team members, including this high-level Cobalion. Then she brings in her Gudra, who manages to stall out Rose's Dynamax turns, so we're fresh out of Dynamax as she brings in her ace Raikou, an absolute hitter, especially with the power boost it gets from Dynamax moves. Thankfully, Sam is able to use Morning Sun to heal through its powerful Dynamax attacks, then once it returns to regular size, finally finish the dog off. Next up in the tournament, we face off against Hop for the final freaking time. He flexes on us a little bit with his shiny Dust Noir, but we all know how this story goes. We absolutely stun on him. And that's the end of the first day of the tournament. As we return to the hotel, Pierce tells us something about something and something happens happens plot related stuff, you know? So we locate the imposters hidden in the town, then battle up to the top of Rose Tower, where this plot related stuff is happening. At the top of the tower, Rose's assistant Oleana is pissed that we're there, so we're forced to battle her. We take out our lead Wailord, then swap to Rose as she brings in a Bolton. The dog is no match for our flower frog, so it goes down, then she sends in her shiny Haxorus. From here, we proceed to whiff on a sleep powder, then Haxorus smacks us with an outrage, which ends up killing our beautiful Rose. Rip. With a heart full of rage, we bring in Papa, who takes this fancy dragon out. Then we somehow overcome the incredible animal magnetism put out by the prettiest Wobbuffet I've ever seen. And we finish the rest of the fight easily. At this point, we overhear some more plot stuff between Rose and Leon about evil plans or something. Then we decide that kind of talk is way above our pay grade, so we just kind of leave and rest up for the next day of the tournament. In the morning, we add our friend Pinchy back to the team, then head over to the stadium, where we're ambushed by the disgraced challenger, Bead, who ends up having probably the craziest team we've seen so far. He leads with a Groudon who almost kills Pinchy, so we swap to David and take it out with some ice punches. His follow-up to Groudon? Thunderous. Wow. Thankfully, David has the strength to take it out with some more ice punches. Same with his Jellicent, only thunder punches this time. And the hitters keep on coming with his next Pokemon, Zeraora, who thankfully is frail enough to get one shot by a high horsepower from Miltank. From here, he brings in a Phalanx that just loses to play rough. And finally, he caps his team off with the most insane Pokemon we've seen yet, his Dynamaxing Rayquaza. I don't know what Opal has been feeding this guy, but it must have been good. Anyway, we Dynamax Miltank, but get hit way too hard to stay in for the full three turns, so we're forced to swap to Sam, who tanks a hit from the dragon, then finishes it off with an Iron Head. Our next fight against Nessa is pretty straightforward. The only crazy thing was her double Cursula, both with Power Gym that almost take out Van, but the tanky boy prevails. The next round of the tournament puts us up against old Bia here, who really doesn't have too much that can stand in the way of Sam, so it's an easy W. Then we move on to the semifinals, where we have a rematch with Raihan. The fight starts off pretty easy. His first four Pokemon go down without much issue. Then he sends in his Celesteela, and all of a sudden, this this thing just starts popping off, taking out Solgaleo, Dragonite, and nah, just kidding, this Pokemon's terrible, it just dies to some thunder punches. Then Raihan brings in his Butterfree, which Gigantamaxes, but meets the same fate as Celesteela. After defeating Raihan, we've arrived at our final challenge against Leon. But Chairman Rose seems to have some other ideas about how we should spend our day. So instead of using the distraction of the championship match as a cover, he announces to the whole world that he's gonna do something evil. Questionable plan, but I respect the theatrics. So we double back to our hometown where we head into the slumbering weld and grab an encounter with a Ho-Oh that just won't get in the freaking ball and eventually it dies to a crit. Rip, hopefully we don't need it. At this point, we do all the stuff with the dogs, spray water all over Chairman Rose's lackluster team, stop the big polygon Eternatus, and save the world with the power of our milkies. Now with the world saved, you already know we just have one last thing to do. Take on the champion Leon to prove to Hop that not only does he suck at training Pokemon, but also his whole family sucks at training Pokemon. So we waste no time and head right into the championship match. Wait. Level 74? Oh dear god. Thankfully, Fairy is a fair and balanced type, so we're able to wall out his Kingdra with Papa. Then he brings in his Audino for some reason, who goes down to a couple dazzling gleams. Next up is his Mamoswine, who we also give the old dazzling treatment. Finally, Leon forces us to switch with his Tapu Fini, but it's no match for Sam, who takes it out with a couple Iron Heads. Then he sends in his Swampert, and we Dynamax, taking it out with a couple Max Knuckles. With our boosted attack, his final Pokemon Braviary stands no chance against our character 
scary Sam, and it goes down easily. With Leon defeated, we have officially survived the most intense randomizer Nuzlocke that I've ever played. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Till next time.